Hey guys, it's Liddy here from LA 3D Printing, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I finished my PLA prints, and I will be painting this awesome Reptar. So, let's get started. Alright guys, so jumping right into the video, um, you might have seen this in my last review, filament review. So, uh, this is my giant Reptar, which I scaled up about 200%, and um, he has some imperfections uh, and I really want to get rid of those and I want to airbrush him and paint him and make him look really cool um, like I did with my deer 3D print um, but I will be using a different airbrush now for this print but to basically um, smooth and hide these layer lines you're gonna need two things to um, do this process you're just gonna need some regular spray paint now I do prefer using primer because that's just a lot better so you need less coats and then you're gonna need some polyurethane clear stain um, fast drying spray now this is for wood, but um, when you mix this and spray paint together, it makes this kind of bond where it is a thicker layer on your print, and it doesn't necessarily um, like melt the layers together, it just hides it more easily instead of having to sand this whole thing. And you can definitely spray paint PLA, some people think that might mess the plastic up, but um, I always spray paint my prints when I want to um, finish them just to give them a nice um, plain layer. Uh, you can use, I usually use black or uh, gray spray paint just to have a neutral color to fill in these lines. Um, but yeah, so there's also going to be some different parts down here as you can see. I have to fill in a lot of these um, bigger gaps that uh, basically have no bottom layer to it just because there's no support there. Um, but other than that, we're just going to be using this basic um, filling technique. And yeah, so let's get right to that and I'll show you guys how I do it. Alright guys, so starting off, we are just going to actually add one thick coat of the polyurethane drying first. You usually add them at the same time, um, but the first one, I'm just going to add a thick coat of this. Just when you're adding the coat, just make sure um, that you're not adding too much on because then it will start dripping and then you'll actually have to sand that off eventually at the end. So just make sure you add a nice thick coat, but not too much. So after this coat, just because I did put a lot on, I usually would let this dry for about five minutes, but it's still a little wet, I would add the um, normal spray paint primer. But um, because there's such a big thick coat on here, I'm just gonna let this dry for the normal 15, 25 minutes, and then um, I will add the spray paint coat. Also, like I brought up earlier, I have these really thick lines, um, line gaps. So as you can see, there's a border of um, thick, uh, paint basically around it. Um, usually you can be able to blow that into the gaps so you don't have to use actual primer um, or um, wood filler to fill that in. But um, for now we're just going to see if that will seep in there but later we might have to um, fill it in a little bit more. Alright guys so it has been about 25 minutes actually um, and I'm going to just be adding an, a layer of normal spray paint. Now I did forget to mention to make sure you are wearing um, a mask or have a fan on or something in your room that you're painting because this is very toxic, there's lots of fumes, so just make sure you are in a um, appropriate room for what you do. So we're just going to be adding a nice thick layer of um, paint on top of this. Um, I'm going to actually have to switch out um, paint because this bottle is not working, so um, I'll do that and then we'll get to painting. So I don't have any black left, I just have some maroon, so I'm just going to be using that. But it should work either way. And as you can see, that um, these thick layers have already been hiding most of the um, layer lines on here. So it's already looking good just with one coat of each. So I'll just paint all this. Um, make sure you do a thick coat, but not too thick where it'll start running, because uh, then we'll have to sand that down later. But uh, yeah, so let's just get to painting this, and then we'll let this part dry.
So there we go, we have one nice really thick um, coat of red on here. And then I will actually let this one set a little bit longer than we did the first layer of the um, other spray. And then I'll add the polyurethane back on top of this and we'll just keep repeating and then we'll eventually spray them both at the same time which is a little tricky um, but yeah so then we'll get the layers filled in a lot more okay guys so I actually ended up having to um, put some Bondo fill putty on this guy um, there's actually only about three coats of the polyurethane and the spray paint on here but uh, just because there were so many um, gaps and bad layer adhesion on here, I just decided to fill it in and I did actually a lot more than I expected. Um, but we're just gonna let this dry and then I'll sand this down and we can go back to the normal painting. But um, mostly if your prints turn out uh, just a basic good quality, you won't have to use this filler putty. This was just um, what I had to do because of these um, indent lines here that were really thick um, and in the spacing and stuff so you usually don't have to do this um, with this method but for now I had to do that so after this dries I'll sand it and then we can go back to the polyurethane spray paint um, coating. Alright guys so I finally have um, Reptar all filled and painted and everything I uh, sanded down the um, bondo that I had to put on here but again you guys do not have to do that um, I just had uh, bad print quality so I had to do that, but I did some more um, priming and stuff, and now this actually looks pretty good. So I finally just received my um, new airbrush, and it's amazing. So now we can start airbrushing this thing and starting to make it look really cool. Alright guys, I really hope you enjoyed uh, the cool little time lapses I took of um, finishing and painting this cool Reptar. I'm finally um, finished with it. Now I actually have to spray a clear coat of um, spray paint over it just so nothing gets scratched or anything. Um, but I do think it turned out pretty awesome. I did actually have to go into the teeth and the eyes and um, hand paint that with the acrylics um, because it was just a little too hard to actually airbrush it because I'm still again new to my new airbrush so it was a little harder to get the little fine details but eventually I figured that out but overall I think this turned out pretty good um, I did some highlighting and stuff down here with a darker green um, but overall it looks pretty cool to me and um, it was a little hard to again learn how to use my airbrush but overall, I think it looks really cool. Another thing is, um, again, you guys do not have to use that Bondo. Now, I know I use the Bondo because I did have some poor print quality, which you can still kind of see on here. Um, I'm not sure what is wrong with my TiVo Tornado, but I'm still trying to fix that. But that was the whole 
point of the bad layer adhesion and the bad layer lines, but usually, um, again, you just use the spray paint and uh, polyurethane um, sprays and put them together and then they just work very well. Um, again, there's also um, some 3D goop which you can use on PLA prints, but honestly, I think this is an easier and cheaper way to finish your prints. And I will definitely um, leave the link to the airbrush I used down in the description. I got it on Amazon for about 20 bucks, and it's actually really nice for um, being $20. It comes with everything you need, a um, tube or a, a cord to connect it to the air compressor and um, different size nozzles, and it's really cool and super easy to use. And then these acrylic paints I used were just some from Hobby Lobby, and I actually used a lot of watercolor paints just to make it a lot easier to clean out of my airbrush, um, which I did have a little bit of a pain of cleaning it out with the acrylics, but I eventually cleaned it, just had to use some hot water and some um, airbrush cleaner that I made with uh, rubbing alcohol water and Windex cleaner, or window cleaner, Windex. Um, but yeah, so again, the bottom, uh, still has a little bit of raft on here, but I tried to um, do it as best as I could But I want to show you guys the difference So this is where there's no filler and then up here is where there is filler and right here I did not add any Bondo so it actually you can see the difference of no um, Filler and then filler even though this is a this is at an angle I um, you can still definitely see the difference which is um, very noticeable and I really enjoy it so again, I really hope you guys enjoyed those time lapses. I know they weren't anything super cool, but I definitely just wanted to show you guys how I painted this. Um, again, and I will also leave the link to this Reptar down in, in the description so you guys can print them out yourself. And um, my links to my Twitter and my Instagram will be in the description below also. So definitely let me know if you guys painted and printed this guy. Um, he's really cool and uh, share your pictures and stuff with me and let me know how that went. Um, so that is actually it for today's video. I do. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I had been posting every day for a couple weeks, but now I'm just going to get on a steady pace and make some really good quality videos for you guys and show you some projects that I've been doing. I'm actually um, doing a lot more with the hands because I have a school project that I'm incorporating the hands with and stuff. So I will definitely be doing a couple more videos on making my hands and stuff. But uh, that is it for today's video with Reptar, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.